So what kind of restrictions are we facing today? Well, there's no specific regulations or directives restricting PFAS as a substance group. There's no, hey, PFAS has been, you know, banned from any country or anything like that. It hasn't happened. It's just, it's not there, right? The most recent legislative activity related to PFAS is focused on drinking water limits, uh, removing PFAS from firefighting foams. Those are the two things because that was the initial discovery was that, oh, we had firefighting foams that saturated our ground, got into the drinking water, and now we have people getting sick. And so that was how this was discovered initially, right? So we see a lot of PFAS limits for drinking water and a lot of firefighting foam action. But there are other things starting to happen now. We see um, legislative in instruments being directed at food contact products and cosmetics. So now they're saying, oh, well, you know, we need to start looking beyond the drinking water, beyond the, the firefighting foams, and see what other areas the exposure uh, um, might be providing risk. Right. However, there is a new proposal by EU member states for doing a broad restriction on all PFAS. That means that dynamic of, hey, we're just going to identify high risk applications and go after those is changing to, hey, um, this is whack-a-mole. We need to go after the PFAS itself. Right. So um, that sounds great on theory, but when you look at the research and analysis going on, there's so many different entities working on this. You have the EPA in the United States, individual U.S. states are doing it. Uh, EU Chemicals Agency is involved. OECD is doing theirs, as well as a lot of other organizations. They're all working to qualify and quantify these risks. They're trying, trying to determine which PFAS are bad, which are not bad. How can we restrict these? Where are they used? Where, where are we having the most risk? And they're still working on that. And the problem is that they're all taking different approaches. So there's different kinds of mentalities being used on this. One is the analysis and restriction on single substances. Hey, we found out that this firefighting foam contains PTFE, and that's been seeping into the ground and causing water contamination. So let's restrict PTFE. In a case of PFOS restricted from uh, POPs, only to have PFOA added later, right? The problem with restricting one at a time is that sometimes they just substitute it with another one. It's just as bad. So that's the kind of risk associated with that approach, yet that's what we've been seeing so far when you look at Proposition 65, when you look at the individual state's water regulations, when you look at uh, the different kind of restrictions we're seeing, so far they've been directed at individual substances. Then you have another approach that's kind of been, you know, encouraged by OECD to kind of group the PFAS substances together. For example, non-polymeric PFAS and could be viewed as representing a higher risk of being able to decimate into the environment than polymeric PFAS. So maybe we need to have kind of an analysis of non-polymeric PFAS as a separate group. That's another approach that's being, you know, taken by some entities. Whereas then you have the kind of all-encompassing, let's just restrict all PFAS and worry about the which exceptions are available for essential use instead. In other words, let's just assume it's all bad and, and quit playing this game. So because, and that's what we see the EU member states in, um, recommending. So we have these kind of different approaches that makes it hard for industry, for us as manufacturers to be proactive and say, okay, we have these regulations coming at us. Let's start collecting data and, and getting ready for this. We don't know what data to collect because we have no idea how they're going to restrict us. So this is becoming problematic for us as an industry. Learn more by viewing the full-length video online at greensofttech.com slash videos. Plus, learn about our environmental regulation solutions online at greensofttech.com.